All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Howard Kaplan. I'm the Director of Business Development with LBI Software, and I'd like to welcome everyone to our presentation today. Today we're going to be talking about HR analytics and how HR analytics relates to the performance of the entire enterprise. And we're also going to relate it to specifically to our, our HR help desk services and how that can be an important part of, a, of an analytics pro, uh, procedure process that you're putting in place for the organization. This is our agenda for today. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about some of the goals for the webinar. So we are all level setting and understanding what the purpose of the presentation is today. And I'll give a brief introduction to LBI as an organization to let you know a little bit about who we are and what we do. Then we're going to talk about the evolution of big data analytics. We're going to define what big data analytics is and how that relates to KPIs and key performance indicators. Then we're going to give some, a couple of slides on some common enterprise analytics programs uh, that are in use today and how they relate to HR analytics. And then we've got some quotes from one of the key experts in the HR world, Josh Burson, who's a, one of the leading bloggers in the HR world. He works for Deloitte and Touche. So I've got some uh, interesting quotes coming from him. And then we'll give, a, give you some hints in terms of how to get started and actually start to begin to put in place an analytics program for your organization. And we're going to leave a couple of minutes at the end to do a brief demonstration of our HR help desk. OK, first of all, what are the goals for this webinar? First and foremost, this is a non-technical presentation. We're not going to be talking about databases, ETL, setting up uh, integration between applications. This is not for the technical user. This is really more to talk about uh, HR analytics, how they relate to the entire enterprise, the impact on corporate performance, and hopefully give you some ammunition, some information that will help you encourage executive stakeholders to embrace HR analytics, which we believe are very important for our customers. A brief infomercial on LBI software. We are a 32-year-old organization. We're located in Long Island, New York. We primarily focus on delivery of human capital management, basically HR-related business solutions for our customers. Our, our legacy is in custom software development, but we have quite a, a suite of packaged applications, the HR Help Desk that you'll see today is one of those. And we focus almost exclusively on mission critical, business critical solution delivery. We don't build generic websites. We build applications that our customers use to run their businesses. And one of our key applications is the Enterprise Help Desk as well as other employee self-service solutions. Enough about LBI. So where does big data really come from? Well, the concept of big data really became popular with the advent of ERP systems, enterprise resource planning systems, going back to the 1990s. This would be your SAPs, your PeopleSofts, your Oracle Financials, even to some degree Microsoft Dynamics, and other products that integrate financials, uh, human resource, manufacturing, and other business-specific applications integrated into one bundled solution. So it's interesting to look at the history and the beginnings of ERP. It really started in the 1960s with a product suite or category, we'll say, called Material Requirements Planning or MRP. And using an example of a customer I worked with many years ago, Coach Leatherware, Coach Leatherware might get a an order from Macy's for a thousand of a particular handbag. They need to determine how many skins of leather they need, how many ornaments that they need to put on the bags, how many rings, how many latches, et cetera, et cetera, how much thread they do they need to sew these bags together. And so what an MRP system did was it actually took that order from Macy's and basically reverse engineered it as it were or back, went backwards and determined 
what materials do I need, do I have to have on hand in order to build that, to fulfill that order. Then about 20 years later in the 1980s, maybe late 1970s, came the concept of MRP2, which was referred to as manufacturing resource planning. And what that did was it added on to MRP because it included things like machine utilization, the usage of employee resources. It took into account financial uh, concerns. For instance, there might be multiple suppliers for one particular raw material. So it would look at the, the supplier who had the availability at the lowest cost. And that eventually evolved in the 1990s to ERP, which we know and love today. And with ERP began the capability of really starting to analyze data across the enterprise, relating financial data to manufacturing data or to HR data as an example. But then ERP couldn't solve 100% of every business's needs which is really what bore, what bore out the beginning of what is commonly referred to as best of breed. Best of breed solutions like our HR help desk, like talent management systems, are basically add-on products that enhance the core ERP solutions. And with the advent of best of breed in ERP, we really started to build a lot of high quality data that companies could use to really understand what's going on under the covers within the organization. So we're going to talk about data a lot. We're going to talk about big data, but let's set the level correctly for what, what is big data. For this presentation, I'm going to use it really as a blanket term for any collection of data sets. Um, but big data really is commonly referred to as data sets that are very large, in the hundreds of gigabytes range, to the, meta, to the terabytes range, even into the exabyte range. So typically big data refers to very large sets of data. It also can refer to structured data, which would be data sitting in a typical database like Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle as an example, IBM DB2, but it might also include unstructured data. What is unstructured data? Unstructured data might be email. It could be Word documents. It could be videos. It could be PowerPoint presentations or, or PDFs. These are documents and files that have a lot of valuable information that an organization can use during their analytic process and their analytic development. But it, it is what we refer to as unstructured data. So it requires special tool sets to actually pull the data from those sources aggregate it from structured sources and start to make sense of that data. But again, for today, when, we, when you hear the term big data, we're really re referring to multiple data sets. Now, big data has been around for really a long time, long before computer technology. So what did big data look like prior to the advent of computer technology? Well, I really like this picture. This is really what organizations, very large organizations like banks, large government agencies like the Internal Revenue Service or Customs Department, for instance, this is really what their data looked like before mainframe computers came along. So how did these organizations manage? And it, frankly, when we look at it today, it's amazing that they even were able to manage working with very large pieces of information from coming from multiple data sources. But I guess they had uh, pretty good filing systems and were able to survive until computers came along. So this is really a snapshot of what big data looks like today. Big data, obviously, it's all digital. Uh, it's mostly interrelatable. Uh, if you use the big data properly, you can get a lot of information out of it that can help your company grow and thrive. If you don't know how to use the data properly, then as this image shows, it'll really just kind of be sucked into a black hole and become useless and disappear. So how is big data being used today? Mostly, and this is a generalization, 
mostly big data is being used to analyze financial performance, to track business process improvements, as well as, and this is a big one, customer and analytics and demographics and how these all relate to each other. And that's really what large organizations are using big data analytics for today. But as this presentation will hopefully present, it's really primed for using HR analytics and integrating HR analytics into these other areas as well. Now we get to that other term that is commonly used, KPIs, otherwise known as key performance indicators. What is the difference and how do they relate between big data and KPIs? Well, big data is the data. It's the raw materials used to do analytics. And KPIs are the actual analytics themselves. Now, KPIs are not dependent on big data. For instance, and you'll see it in a little while, in our HR help desk, we provide you with a KPI tool, a very powerful KPI tool that really limits itself to the information in the HR help desk and potentially with the other information that may be sitting in your other HR information systems. So KPIs don't require big data, uh, but they take advantage of big data because they can provide deeper insights into the issues that, you, that are being analyzed. And like this statement at the bottom, what if HR could not only analyze internal employee satisfaction data, but also compare that data to others in your industry, or even further relate this data to financial performance. Now you're really, really getting some powerful information out of the database, data that your company is gathering. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about some of the popular and most widely used enterprise analytics programs. And what you're going to see is Regardless of the information they're collecting, it all really goes back to the people, the people in the organization. First, let's talk about the balanced scorecard. You may have heard of some of these. Balanced scorecard is a strategic planning and management system. And basically what it is, is it's a system or an initiative that attempts to interrelate all aspects of a business operation, everything from the financial, to the internal business processes, to the employees themselves, to the customers, and customers specifically for measuring satisfaction and things like that. So basically, one of the questions that a balanced scorecard tries to answer is, if I spend a million dollars training my sales force, is that going to result in higher customer satisfaction? And is that higher customer satisfaction going to impact my financial performance? That's just one simple example of what a balanced score, scorecard framework is attempting to deliver. Now, if you look at it from a perspective point of view, there are four perspectives in a balanced scorecard. There's the financial perspective, the customer perspective, the internal process perspective, and then learning and growth. And further, the learning and growth really refers to employee satisfaction, the impact of turnover, the impact of employee training and education, et cetera. So where does that information come from in that overall balanced scorecard and analytics? Well, that information comes from those HR data sets that we talked about earlier. It could be information sitting in the HR IS system. It could be coming from your talent management system. It could be coming from the HR help desk system or your time in attendance system. One of the benefits of integrating an HR help desk system with a talent management system is a talent management system does a good job of tracking skills training, tracking things like employee turnover, but it doesn't give you the why. The HR help desk gives you the why. Is there a lot of employee turnover? What, what is happening to cause that employee turnover? Because the ticket management and the case management tool in your HR department will help answer those types of questions. So as you can see, HR is one quarter of a very important initiative in the balanced scorecard. Let's talk about another one that's very popular, Six Sigma, which was originally developed by GE. Six Sigma was originally developed for manufacturing, and its initial goal was to reduce waste, to reduce 
to defect re reduction to, to actually increase defect re reduction, as well as improve quality of products. And it looks at the process a little differently than balanced core card. There are five perspectives in a Six Sigma defining, basically defining what's the problem we're looking to solve, what is the goal of, the, of this initiative, what are the resources we have available to you, etc. Then we need to measure what's currently going on right now today, what actually needs to be improved. We need to analyze those measures. We need to determine what we can do to fix the problems that exist, what are the root causes that can be eliminated. And then, of course, ultimately, we're going to improve our processes. And once we've improved those processes, we're going to control them and sustain those gains over time. So looking at Six Sigma from a different point of view, Six Sigma is very much aligned to the personnel resources in your organization. The key personnel in your company that would manage a Six Sigma project are what are referred to in the Six Sigma vernacular as green belts and black belts. These are typically senior managers and executives of the organizations. These are the key stakeholders that are responsible for managing this particular project. But if you look to the right, you'll see all of the resources within an organization, and each one of them has a role and a title. But at the bottom of that triangle, of that pyramid, is the yellow belt. And the yellow belt is really the largest number, the larger number of employees that work on a Six Sigma initiative. These are typically subject matter experts. These are typically regular employees. They're not typically managers, executives, et cetera. And what happens is these are the people that typically you need to understand. Because you can see at the base of this pyramid, if those yellow belts are not engaged with the organization, if they're not fully engaged in the project, then the project has the, the potential to fail. So it's very important to analyze the personnel, getting pulling that information from the systems that I'm showing, because they're really the base of a Six Sigma, a successful Six Sigma project. Let's look at another initiative, Kanban. Kanban is a Japanese developed program that's similar to, you might have heard of Lean Manufacturing, for instance, or Just-in-Time Manufacturing. This was originally, like some of these other initiatives, a manufacturing process, but it's been expanded to be used in the high-tech industry, professional services industry, software development firms, et cetera. And basically what Kanban says is, as I use up materials, bring those materials to me. In a programming world, as I, program, as I complete a module of a program, deliver it to the person that's going to integrate that module into that particular program. It's all about increasing efficiency. So let's take a little closer look at Kanban and how that relates to HR. Well, there are four primary principles in a Kanban initiative. And they're, up, they're on the top left. The first one is respect the current process, roles, responsibilities, and titles. Very much an HR initiative. Number two, start with what you do know. Number three, agree to pursue incremental evolutionary change. Number four, encourage leadership at all levels. So when you think about it, again, in a Kanban analytics initiative, where are you going to get that HR information? You're going to get it from that HR data warehouse or data mart that you developed. It's going to come from all sides. Now you'll notice on the right, this is the book cover of one of the Kanban experts, a gentleman by the name of David Anderson, who wrote a number of books on using the Kanban philosophy in the technology industry. And I just thought it was interesting that the cover of the book shows personnel issues. I'm stuck. I'm too busy. I'm idle, etc. And again, where can I pull that information? Well, that information is exactly the kind of thing we're storing in our HR help desk today. So you can see from these three major programs, HR analytics are a very, very key component of those processes 
And basically, the, if any one of these pillars fail, the whole process, the whole program has the potential to fail. Now, in these slides, I've been talking about talent management. I've been talking about HR Help Desk. Of course, there are other best of breed solutions. But I'm bringing up talent management because there's a wealth of information in the talent management suite of systems. A lot of our customers have deployed them or in the process of looking into these systems. And talent management, as you probably know, really is that cradle to grave management of the employee relationship within the organization. So it starts with the recruiting and onboarding processes, goes through training and development, performance management, excuse me, all the way to offboarding of that employee when he leaves the organization. What's interesting about talent management systems is the one component that they don't include is the ability to track the day-to-day -day interaction between the employee and the organization, specifically HR, where they track everything else. They're good at re reporting on an employee's performance review. They're good at reporting on an employee's training certification. But what about when they, those employees have problems or issues throughout their tenure with the organization? This is where HR Help Desk comes into play. And as you can see from this graphic, there really is a one-to-one -one mapping between HR Help Desk services and talent management services as well. So where is all the HR data? We've talked about some of it, but these are the most common areas where you're going to find HR data. There are others. Obviously, in your HR system, uh, you'll find demographic information, employment and history information, payroll, time and attendance applications. We'll have wage information, hours work, leave, leave requests, absenteeism. Talent management tracks training, development, and performance. HR Help Desk I highlight because that's obviously what we focus on. Employee problems and issues, specific requests, personal requests, general questions and general feedback. Survey data, your company might be using SurveyMonkey as an example to survey employees to find out their satisfaction levels, where they can do, offer up suggestions for improvement in the organization, and other sources. Other sources might be census data that you can buy from the government, uh, other information in your ERP systems, information in ver vertical specific systems, etc. And in the end, better data equals better analytics results. I'd like to introduce some comments and some quotations from Josh Burson, as I mentioned earlier. Josh is one of the leading bloggers in our industry, the HR industry. He works for Deloitte. Uh, he wrote a great article in Forbes.com, Forbes not in the magazine online, rather. Uh, the URL is at the bottom. And if anyone is interested in this PowerPoint with this URL, I'll be happy to send it to you after we are done with the presentation. But his article was entitled, Big Data in Human Resources. Talent Analytics Comes of Age. And I just highlighted a couple of key quotes that really talk to the purpose of this presentation today. The first one is, how well do organizations truly understand what drives performance among their workforce? The answer is not really very well. Down the page, for the last 30 years, we've captured demographic information, performance information, educational history, job location, many other factors about our own employees. Are we using this data scientifically to make people decisions? Not yet. And you're actually going to see in a couple of slides some survey results. They surveyed a large number of companies to determine who's doing this and who's not doing this. The last quote on this page, this to me is the single biggest big data opportunity in business, and we at LBI certainly agree. Some other quotes. What's going on with the people that are leading in the industry and are taking advantage of this type of information and these types of resources? Leading companies generate high returns for their hard work. Their stock market returns are 30% higher than the S&P 500. They're twice as likely to be delivering high impact recruiting solutions and their leadership pipelines are two and a half times healthier. These HR teams are four times more likely to be respected by their business counterparts. So according to Josh, 
This is really, really very important, and this is something your organization should be taking a close look at. This is the results of a survey that Deloitte did. And basically, they're asking organizations, mostly medium to larger organizations, where do they see themselves fitting in terms of reporting and analytics? And you can see at the bottom level, level one. And level one is standard reports, summary reports, detail information reports, those types of things. More than half of the respondents haven't really risen above that. So there's really a lot of improve, room for improvement. At the top of the ladder, level three and level four, where we're, where we're really getting into strategic analysis and predictive analytics, less than 15% of organizations are really at that point today. So there's a lot of room for growth there. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes and talk about analytics related to HR, our HR help desk. First of all, at the Burson and Deloitte Town Analytics Level 1, we do a very good job of that. This is a screenshot from our HR help desk solution. And this is specifically a screenshot of the saved report screen. What HR Help Desk allows us to do, and I'll be demonstrating this in a couple of minutes, is generate standard reports, as you would expect, and filter those reports in very powerful ways. And once you've created a report, you've filtered that report, and you want to save that report for one-click access later, you have the ability to save the report, and it publishes it to your private report screen, which is what you're looking at here. And these reports can be given common user-defined names, alphanumeric names, and could call them anything you want to call them. But once you've created that report and saved that report for later usage, we also give you the ability to schedule those reports to run at predetermined times. Like in this example, this report will run every Monday and every Wednesday at 9 a.m. You also have the ability to select a distribution list, to create a distribution list of recipients that will get that report automatically. Very powerful add-on to the HR Help Desk. This is new in version 5. Now, at that analytics level number 2, we're there as well. We give you the ability to take any of those reports that you run and easily extract particular data points from those reports to use in other systems for analysis. So in this example screen here, I've taken several pieces of information, case owner, open date, close date, etc. And I've exported that information with a couple of mouse clicks directly into Excel where I'm ready to do pivot table or pivot chart analysis. And these are some just quick examples of charts that I created for the presentation. At the top right, you'll see a division comparison report. Or you see at the left side, average days open by HR personnel. So again, you can take that information from that report which is typically just summarizing, and it might be providing details, this gives you the ability to pivot or really compare and contrast in information. And this is a non-technical user feature that's available to all users in the HR Help Desk. We also take you to that level three, which is with the executive dashboard. Every license to HR Help Desk includes an executive dashboard with up to nine widgets that we configure to your specific key performance indicators. For instance, in this example, we have employee self-service effectiveness, CSR effectiveness, throughput, throughput per month, where are the cases coming from, what are, the, what are my busy days, et cetera. And you notice we have a large number of graphical representations of that data available to you as well as the ability to click the view, TT, view Details button and drill down into the data behind those, uh, those reports. And again, each LBI, HR Help Desk license, includes a license to one dashboard, and additional dashboards can be integrated as well. So let's go to that level four. Well, we, nor does any other single company, take you to that level four level where, where we're really getting into the predictive analytics. The next step is really up to you. 
we can work with you, you can work with your current vendors to start putting together a program that will be benefit to that will benefit your organization. The important thing is the systems we provide and other vendors provide are providing you with that integrated data that will make your analytics programs a little easier to manage. So just one brief technical slide on HR Help Desk. How do we actually assist in providing an open source of data for you to use with other systems? Well, HR Help Desk is built with entirely open technology. It's a Java-based application. It's 100% web-based. The application will run in any browser, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, any standard browser. We include, at no additional cost, mobile versions that are supported on iPhones and iPads, basically the iOS operating system, as well as Android native browsers. And from an IT perspective, they'll be happy to know there are no controls that need to be installed to run my system, no Flash, no ActiveX, no Java, et cetera, no Java applets, et cetera. All you need is a current or a recent version of a standard browser, and you're ready to use my system. From a database standpoint, very open architecture. We support, we support all of the major database technologies, Oracle, Oracle MySQL, DB2 from IBM, Microsoft SQL Server, etc. We also support the major operating systems, Linux, other versions of Unix, Windows Server, and Sun Solaris. So the point here is to show you that our application is an entirely open architecture we're almost certainly going to be able to support the technology stack that your IT personnel supports today. So what can you do to get started? Just a couple of quick tips before we get to a demonstration of the application. First of all, you want to establish goals and, you, and your core initial analytics requirements. Really, basically, where are you going to get the most bang for the buck and set goals to achieve those. Next, you need to make sure that you've got all the systems in place that provide the data sources that you need to meet your analytic goals. So you need to make sure your ERP, HRIS systems are up to date, your HR case management system, talent management, email, and again we talked about external sources that you might be licensing from other organizations or the U.S. government. So you, may, you need to make sure that the data that you need is there when you start the project. You also need to align your technical resources. Obviously, as you would expect, data warehouses, big data analysis, developing KPIs uh, are very technical in nature. So you need the support of your IT organization. You need the support of software vendors like us, consulting vendors uh, like Accenture, Deloitte, whoever you might be using. And you also need the correct analytic software to build the products and solutions that you eventually will use. And my brief suggestion is start small, think strategic. Basically, don't start with a big bang approach. Try to get some wins early on. And as you build on those wins, executive management will take notice and will hopefully help you build into a larger project that will benefit the whole organization. So with that, I'm actually going to get to a demonstration of the application HR Help Desk. And I'm going to toggle over to it now. We're going to spend a few minutes showing you the key features of HR Help Desk. Uh, I'm going to start with the employee portal. The employee portal is what your day-to-day, -day, your, your, your typical workforce will use to interact with HR through the HR Help Desk. And keep in mind, we also include a mobile version. So they could be sitting on the beach with their iPhone, and they could still contact HR if that, of course, is permissible. A couple of things you'll notice about this screen. Number one, it's a login screen. We do support single sign-on. So if your company supports single sign-on, your employees will not need to log in. They'll all, all automatically be logged in. And also, you'll notice our screen colors and, and logo. We brand every implementation to your organization's logo and screen colors. So the application on day one looks like something that's very familiar to your employees. 
So I'm going to log in as Eugene Gooden. And this is Eugene Gooden's main screen. And what you're looking at is a table of cases, current and past cases, from Eugene Gooden. This is probably what it would look like after maybe two years or three years. Our statistics show that the average employee, excuse me, the average employee contacts HR typically three to four to five times a year maybe. So this would look like so an employee screen after a couple of years. And the employee has the ability to sort through the lists, as I'm showing here. They have the ability to click the plus sign and get details of the case. You'll notice a paper clip. The paper clip means that this employee has attached a supporting document to his issue. And let's look at this issue for a moment. It says, I'm being harassed by my fellow associates. They claim it's friendly. Please read the attached article which, which relates to my issue. Ultimately, it was resolved. It was taken care of. So he actually attached one of HR's documents, bullying in the workplace, as supporting argument for the issue that he has. It's important to note that employees as well as HR users can attach unlimited documents of different types to the supporting cases, and this information is stored in the permanent record of each case. You'll also notice over here interactions. Interactions are the dialogues that take place between employees and HR. This is typically taking place today in your email system, the written dialogues, that is, obviously not the phone dialogues. Uh, the disadvantage of, of maintaining employee interactions with HR through email is they're not secure. And one of the things you'll see throughout our demonstration is that we focus on privacy, security, and confidentiality. So by taking those conversations, those dialogues out of corporate email, putting it within the body of the case within my system, we're restricting it from unauthorized eyes. Because as you know, if I send in a, a harassment issue to HR and that email gets BCC'd or forwarded to unauthorized eyes, you could be breaching contracts and you could potentially have a, a legal issue on hand. So we take those dialogues out of HR, I'm sorry, out of email and put them directly within the body of the case. And up here, you'll see the employee can enter a new case. He can also search the knowledge base. This is one of the two knowledge bases that are included with the system. This is what we refer to as the wiki knowledge base. The wiki knowledge base is basically a Windows help style searchable database of your HR documents, all of your HR documents. These would be your benefit guides, handbooks, calendars of events, forms, etc. And what we do is we take all those documents, we catalog them, we categorize them, we index them in a searchable format for employees to be able to search for answers to their questions before they ever have to contact HR. So the employees have the ability to peruse through the table of contents, search the index, or actually do a keyword search. We keyword search. Let's say I'm about to retire and I want to look for documents that might help me in my retirement. There are three documents in, the, in my sample database that provide information to the employee about retirement. Very nice feature included in the system. The other one we'll see in a minute. Let's say the knowledge base did not answer my question, so I'm going to create a new problem. It defaults to where I work. I work in Acme East. I've got a payroll question. I've got specifically a paychecks question. The second database that's included with the application, we refer to as the Common Problems Knowledge Base. The Common Problems Knowledge Base is an FAQ, or Frequently Asked Questions Knowledge Base. So under the category of payroll and paychecks, we do have a couple of common problems that might potentially answer the employee's question. 
what we're doing is we're spoon feeding help to the employee to ensure that they use self-service as much as possible to basically not bother HR with common and re recurring questions. So if this was helpful, he can close it out and say yes, and that would tag this case as a tier zero response, or he can create a new case. We won't bother to do that now. We also give you the ability within this screen to go back to that wiki knowledge base but because this was a payroll question, we took him directly to the payroll section of the Wiki Knowledge Base, again, to help him, help encourage him to look for answers to his questions before he bothers to go to HR. Okay. So we're going to close out of the employee. And we're going to switch over to the administrator. So you're going to notice some similarities. First of all, again, if your organization supports single sign-on, so do we. The administrators and HR users, agents, managers, etc., will all need to log in. But for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to log in as an administrator. And I, my name is Mary Jones. I'm an administrator. Because I'm an administrator, I can see every case in the system or cases for a particular person. Let's say I want to look at Casey's cases. Because Casey called in sick today, I have the ability to say, let me select all of Casey's cases. It's a tongue twister. And I'm going to assign them to Mary Anderson because her workload is low. So what happens is Casey's load in a moment, has been cleared. Now when I go to Mary Anderson's caseload, there are her, her cases as well as Casey's that are assigned to Mary. And in this screen, the user has the ability to say, what do I want to work on today? Just show me the urgent cases designated by a red exclamation point. Show me everything that's overdue. Show me everything that's opened, or include recently closed cases as an example. Or say, just show me the Acme West cases as an example. So these check boxes and these drop down lists give me the ability to full filter through my to-do list for the work that I want to accomplish today. And because I'm an administrator, again, not only can I see my cases, I can see the cases for every group. Now I can see the cases for every user, including any cases that may be unassigned. Because I'm an administrator, I also have the ability to let me, let me pick up a pull up a case to actually delete a case if I wanted to. We're not going to bother to do that. Also, this is the screen that I use when I'm searching for an employee. Let's say Kim Romano has called in and she's got a question about FMLA leave. How do I find Kim Romano's record ready to work with Kim? Well, if I can spell her name, great. If I can't spell her name but I sort of know what it sounds like, I'm going to try that. Maybe I know her ID number, maybe I know her social security number, or maybe she, I actually know the case ID she's asking about. But I don't know any of those, so I'm going to type in Romano. I'm going to do the best I can to spell Kim's name. Well, I'm wrong, but it was good enough to get me to Kim Romano's record. So using the sound like feature is a very, very powerful feature, particularly in multinational organizations where you have very complicated last names and even first names. Very helpful in finding that needle in the haystack. So you're going to notice what uh, I'm looking at Kim Romano's record. You'll notice we give you direct links to Kim's social media sites. So you can do that 360 degree review of Kim, see what she's saying about the company on Twitter, see if Kim is searching for a job on LinkedIn as an example, or posting uh, unethical pictures on Facebook as an example. You'll see a bunch of fields of information. All of this is integrated and comes directly from your HR system. And these fields are definable by you. And this is Kim's case history. 
These are all the cases that are open and closed. Notice she's calling in about case number 10, which is overdue. So I'm going to click on it and open the case. This is details on the case for Kim. She's asking, who do I contact to submit an FMLA request? Notice HR can keep free form notes during the course of resolving this case. HR also has the ability to create tasks that must be completed before the case can be closed. These can be hard coded and always occur. For instance, when an FMLA case request comes up, you would have a set of procedures that, not, that must be followed before the case can be closed. But also, these can be soft tasks that can be added by the, an administrator or a manager or edited or even removed. Typically, that feature is not given to a CSR or an agent, but it would be given certainly to an administrator, maybe even to a manager. We talked about interactions before. This is what the HR user sees interactions. It's important to note when the employee uses the interactions features in the employee's portal, he only sees the dialogue between himself and the case owner. However, in the HR system, the HR case owner has the ability to communicate with other people in HR. So Mary Jones talked to Kim, but she also talked to Sandra, who's an HR person. She also talked to Mary Anderson, who's also an HR person. So HR sees the full details of the, of the interaction, where the employee only sees that interaction between him and the HR personnel. And it's important to note that all of this information is stored in the permanent record of the application. It's also important to note we keep an audit trail of every action that occurs in every single case in the system. What I mean is a case is open. Let's take this case as an example. It was opened by Mary Jones. It was unassigned. Mary assigned it to the benefits department. But notice when I mouse over, you see the previous value. We did not remove unassigned. It's still in the database. On the second revision of this case, the priority went from high to urgent. In the third iteration, there's a red asterisk that showed that a number of tasks were created all the way up through the conclusion of this case. And this report is not only available as a dialog box, as I showed you, it's also available as a report. And we'll get to the reports in a couple of minutes. Some other features that are important. You see a links button up here. HR Help Desk has the ability not only to link to your HR system to pull down information from the master file, it can also link to other systems. For instance, we have a client who uses PeopleSoft for HR, but they have ADP for payroll. So they wanted the ability to launch the payroll screen for, this, for, every, for each employee from a single button, a single link button. So for instance, this customer may have this information coming from PeopleSoft, but when he clicks the link, it's not live at the moment, it would jump him to Kim Romano's screen in the payroll application, which in this case would be ADP. You'll also notice an added employee info button. It's important to note, as you would expect, that HR case manager is not the system of record for the employee master file. That's your HR system. Uh, that's where we pull the information from. But many of our customers want to keep non-employees in the system and give them limited access to the knowledge bases and access to HR as well. Who are these non-employees? A non-employee might be a 1099 worker, contract worker as an example. It might be a retiree asking about uh, cashing in his 401k plan. It could be a terminated employee uh, having questions about his COBRA. It could be the spouse of an injured worker who's on disability who you want to give access to HR and HR forms and documents, et cetera. So we give you the ability internal to HR Help Desk to store all of those non-employees in the system 
and have them effectively treated like regular employees in the system, but you can segregate what parts of the system they have access to. When HR needs to create a new case, they would just simply click the new case button. And this dialog pops up. Again, we provide you with the same, we provide HR with the same common problems knowledge base. Um, that you would expect that the, that the employee has, and you also have access to the wiki knowledge base that the employee has as well. This is an important feature down here, the common problems button. How do we build the common problems knowledge base? There are three ways to do it. The first way is we can import it from an existing file if your organization has that. Second, secondarily, we, do, we provide you a utility in the administrator section to build the, the common problems knowledge base manually. But we also give HR users, and this could be even CSRs and agents, the ability to nominate questions that they're getting frequently, to nominate them as a common problem. And what happens is those go into a, a queue where HR administrators go in, can, they can approve these, these nominated problems, edit them, delete them, whatever they see, excuse me, whatever they see fit. We're going to get to reports. This is important to this presentation. We talked about the ability to run standard reports. So let's say I want to run the case status report. Let me pull some data. And I want to see the full detail of cases for this time period. Notice I have a number of filtering options. This is going to take a moment to run. What you're going to see is every report comes with a table of contents feature that allows me to drill down and get to the specific section of report that I may want to print or get access to. Obviously, I have the ability to scan through the report. Most reports provide summaries at the end, as well as graphical summaries. We talked about this before, the ability to say, let me just pull out a few uh, pieces of information, extract particular data points from that report, and uh, hold on, open it up in Excel, ready to do pivot table or pivot chart analysis or anything you need to do with it. Let's get out of this. As you would expect from any good report writer, we provide you with the ability to not only export data points, as I showed a moment ago, but also to export the entire fully formatted report in a number of standard file structures. Obviously, Excel, PostScript, PDF, Word. We also now support open document formats, as well as PowerPoint. In a PowerPoint, each page would be represented by a slide. Close this out. And then we talked about the dashboard. These are the key performance indicators that we build for you. These are just some examples uh, on my screen. Again, every license includes one executive dashboard and the programming and configuration of up to nine widgets of, in, of key KPIs that your managers and senior executives want to track. That includes, by the way, data from the HR help desk system, but optionally it can include data from other systems like your HR system or your talent management system as well. So that was really a quick tour of the HR help desk application. We're going to go back to the PowerPoint, and at this point, 
I'm going to thank everyone for attending. Hopefully this presentation was interesting and informative. I'm going to go to the home page. And I'm going to leave my contact information up on the screen for a minute or two. For those of you that would like to contact me, I will be sending all the attendees a thank you note. Uh, if you are interested in a copy of the PowerPoint presentation or would like more information about our HR Help Desk or other services, we'd be happy to speak with you. So feel free to contact me at your earliest convenience and we will work with you to help you with whatever your issues are. Again, thank you very much for attending. And at this point, the presentation will be ending. Thank you.